Well, it's a vice grip for pliers and pliers for a wrench, a wrench for a hammer, hammers everything else. It just don't seem to make much difference. I sure do like him, but he's hard on equipment. You have been very busy while I have been bringing home the <laughs> Satan <laughs> well, by fixing up our worn winch system. You wanted to put an in cab switch in. Yeah, we put an in cab switch in, so that will show you that it's uh, something we wanted to do. Good thing to have. We also discovered that one of the solenoids in the winch it looks as though it's puke. Now that's a strange word to fuck. We so that's brought up another problem. Solenoid reliability. Hmm. Bit questionable, I think. The, the old-fashioned worn solenoids. We'll show you Not those. Real good. So rather than replace like for like with buying a couple of new solenoids, we decided to go all out to buy this. This is an Albright's DC 182. It's beast. It's a beast of a thing. This is bigger than their 88 model that they were used to use. It's a competition sort of thing, but I think it's going to be more reliable than the solenoids. I hope it is. It's a big DC contactor. It's compatible. It will fit in the winch box, and we're going to show you how this is all wired up as well as we go. So, uh, yeah, so uh, the winch continues to evolve. It's still basically the same old one. It's the same drum and the same planetary gear set, but it's everything like else is supercharged. <laughs> supercharged. Everything yeah. else is. Uh, but I suppose that's the beauty of a good quality winch like Warren. You know, you can you can do this with it. You know, you can keep. You can improve it. And build and and replacing parts as they die. We've, uh, we've probably spent more on it than we really should, but you know, that's... Uh... That's the case with everything in the arts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll see how we go. So today's job is wiring up this Albright solenoid. Now it looks fairly straightforward. We're just going to have a look. Uh, they supply a wiring diagram, but as far as, yeah, we'll, we'll, it's a little bit of trial and error, I think. We'll work it so out. It's a bit more complicated than If we see sparks, we know we've, we've got live, and if we don't, we're... Uh, right. Uh, should be all right. Fine. Have a look in there. That's the original worn solenoid. So they're wired uh, in pairs. So one pair is for winch out and one is for winch in. These are nine and a half XPs. Have this extra. This is a. That's your standard solenoid. This is the, uh, actually a bigger one. I think it's a six two eight nine one or something like that. Still available from worn. We could have replaced them if we wanted to, but we. Uh, since one has died, we might as well take this opportunity to do what I've wanted to do for a while and try the Albright contactor pack. He's really just taking this as, a, as an excuse to spend my money. Yeah, that's what he does. <laughs> if it ain't broke, Jade will fix it. If it ain't broke, let's pull it apart and fix it anyway. That's our philosophy. Fix it. <laughs> this brown wire, now I know this is pretty standard across a lot of worn, so this might be applicable to a lot of people. If, if you're interested in doing this. Yep. The brown wire is actually earth for the solenoids, right? Uh-huh. So it's a common earth for all the solenoids. The black wire is an earth for the switch. The red wire is the power wire, which connects directly to the power wire that feeds directly off your battery or directly onto this terminal here in the solenoid pack. This one here? Yep. And the green and white are in and out respectively. I can't remember which is which. One is winch in, one is white. So one's power out, power in. Yes, yeah, so if you're working on worn uh, winches and products, you'll actually find a lot of you may not have imperial um, tools, uh, if you're mostly used to working on Jap Forbies and uh, live in Australia. Um, I do because I work on aircraft, but uh, yeah, it's very handy. This is about the only time we use Imperial tools when we're working on the worn winch, but it's all Imperial. So we've just removed the F1, F2 terminals and the big power lead. Nice. The other one is an earth, so what you need to do now is remove all of the these the control um, wires. Oh, you can see that's a bit tight. While we're um, 
pulling the solenoid, all the solenoids out of the worn box and uh, obviously got to disconnect all the control wires as well and uh, try and figure out how to put this bit together. Okay, so you should be able to lift the whole control cover box off now. And we'll have a good look at that, give it a bit of a clean. There might be one more terminal, so just be careful. Yeah, they're coming off. show the kind of face. These are the original worn solenoids. One of which has failed, we don't know which, we don't need to find out because we're, this will replace all of these. These are 10 years old so I guess reasonable service. Thank you Warren. This is our map. This is what we've got to work with. This is the puzzle that we're playing today. It's actually pretty straightforward to see what one goes where. It's more just how do we how are we going to mount this? Is it? Well, we'll mount it in the control box. You don't have to, but so we might just, as well. Do we need to get these off then? Yeah, well, we'll have to. That's what I said. Bend them out of the way or cut them well, with the grinder. They feel pretty shitty. Yeah, they're only a bit of poo. Well, no, you can't bend it that way. All right. Well, I'll cut them with the grinder. Cut them with the grinder. Oh, well, just do that, and they'll probably break yeah, off. They look they're pretty short. Well, tiny bit of poo. It's too bad if we wanted to fit more solenoids again, though. Oh, it won't, won't, will we? I don't think so. This one's gonna last us forever. Oh yeah, so as you can see, this is the di wiring diagram. And this is the wired thingy. I haven't put the power on yet. I don't want to die or anything. As you can see, we've got A, F1, F2, just say A, F1, F2, pretty simple. If you're unsure how to identify your A, F1 and F2 cables, um, it's very easy to find out because they are actually stamped next to the terminal blocks. And you can see them on there on your winch motor. This is our old winch motor and find A, F1, F2, and it might be a good idea to label up your cables um, at the other end so you can more easily identify them when it comes to attach them to your contact pack. So you can see here, the diagram we're following, switch positive, switch negative, or two switch positives to go to the switch, negative, self-explanatory, and the power wire. Actually, it's a good point. Something to mention about worn winches and these sorts of winches. They have an internal braking mechanism um, because when you're winching in, when the motor's running, it's pulling under load. It's actually the electrical resistance that stops the winch from being able to pull out, in theory, if you don't have a brake. Do you know what I mean? It would just be electrical resistance of the motor back generating. That would... Uh, not be sufficient to hold a vehicle on a slope. So they have a brake in them, but the brakes tend to only work in one direction. So it is important to get your motor the right way around. So winch in is winch out. It's no good to say, well, we can just swap the switch around because you need to make sure that when the winch is out, that the brake is working on the, in that direction because it won't work as well in the other direction. Pretty critical. Can be. Right, this is finished product. Just kidding. Yeah, well, the switch came on. That's good. Switch came on. Cool. Right, and I'll go the other way. Smashed it. Now I want to see. Now we put Domino. We need to know what direction it's going in. That's right. Needs to go. We need to go this way. Observe drum rotation and winching. Yeah, that's in. Yeah. So we've got it on the right way. Yeah. Cool. Let's right, probably neaten this yeah, monster up. Yeah. 
see this Katie, Katie, Katie. What is that, Jay, Jay, Jay? That it's a good solid mechanical connection as well, you know. Yeah, of course. Give, give it a bit I of a tug. Give it, give it a tug. And make sure it's. Oh, it's a bit of a too, That's hilarious, Jade. That's very clever. How did you come up with something so clever? <laughs> Probably the only thing else we could do to this winch now would be to fit a plasma rope. You know, instead of this the old steel panel. Hmm. I thought you weren't too sure about them though. Well, no. Everything has its pros and cons, but... You know... We're talking before about winches being a maintenance item. If you have a plasma rope, you have to view that the same. Like, once a year you're going to have to replace it. That's what I would do with a plasma rope. I would just accept that. Yeah, every year I put a new one, or at least 18 months, something like that, mm. as a service item. Thanks so much for watching our video, guys. Um, I hope this has been helpful to any of you who are trying to replace your solenoids with the DC-182. Um, if there's anything that we've missed out, anything that isn't clear, we do reply to our messages, so get in touch with us um, on here, on YouTube, or on Facebook or Instagram or our blog www.thewhiteox.com um, and give us any questions about your troubleshooting needs. We do get back to you as soon as we can. Um, in the meantime, if you have liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, um, subscribe and uh, await more videos on our winch project nerdiness. Thank you.